Hey y'all, it's Trish with Arch Legacy Firm. Thank you for joining me with for Whiskey and Wells. Happy Wednesday, everybody. So today I am drinking Bullet Tenure, and I'm not actually a big bullet drinker, um, but I decided to try their tenure. I've never tried it before. And so my husband and I tried it on Sunday. It has a very low profile smell for sure. It's 10 years, so it is supposed to be more mellow. So the longer a bourbon rests, the, the more mellow it becomes typically. Now, there are some bourbons where that is the exception to the rule. It is definitely more mellow than the regular bur uh, bullet bourbon. What I would say is, honestly, it doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. It's pretty sweet up front. Um, it has a really kind of random slow burn. So, like, really on the back end, all of a sudden, you'll get, like, a sharp burn down your throat. Uh, which I don't love. One of the other things I noticed when I was drinking on Sunday is that as the ice melts, uh, it really gets watered down very, very, very quickly. So not my favorite. I like a smooth bourbon, but I definitely like it to have a little bit more flavor so that you can enjoy it. So it's very drinkable, but at the same time, I probably would not personally buy this again. But again, like I said, I've never been a big fan of bullet regular. So I was kind of hoping that it was a lot better to hear. And honestly, um, for the price, this is about $45 a, a bottle here in Athens. And for the price, Woodford's about $10 cheaper. And I would probably grab a bottle of uh, Woodford any day. So, but it's definitely a drinkable bourbon. I, I'd probably give it about a five out of 10, um, personally. In all honesty, I can't even tell you what the flavor flavors are that I'm tasting. It's just, it, it really is very, very mild. I don't taste a lot up front. It's just really more that slow burn on the back end. So um, I wanted to go ahead and reintroduce the actual bourbon tasting to Whiskey and Wills, which I've kind of let go for a little while. Um, so each week I will be trying a different type of bourbon and, uh, and kind of critiquing it. Now I am not a professional bourbon drinker by any means, shape, or form. I am not professionally trained. So any critique that I give of bourbon is just my personal experience. Uh, my dog's name is Woodford. My cat's name is Whiskey. I've done the bourbon trail several times. I really do like bourbon, but I'm in no way a professional. So this is a very amateur critique. But just on the day-to-day -day when I go to the liquor store, I like to know some really good bourbons to grab. So hopefully maybe this can help with, uh, with some of that. But Getting back to estate planning, um, today I wanted to talk about probate and the three ways to avoid it. So generally in Georgia, there are three ways to avoid probate. Again, probate is the court process that happens after someone passes away. They're no longer just able to sign over their assets to anyone else, so the judge has to do it for them. It is a court process. If it is remotely a complex estate, typically probate attorneys do have to be hired. And so in Georgia, there are three ways to avoid probate. So the first is to pass away with no assets. Now, you can still have assets, they just can't be probate assets. So what does that mean? So if you have retirement accounts and life insurance plans, policies, typically those avoid probate because they are beneficiary designated items. And what that means is remember that no matter who you leave those to in your will, they're left to whoever you named as the beneficiary. They're not going to be governed by your will unless you have young children. If your children are under the age of 18 and you have life insurance policies or retirement plans, those policies will not avoid probate if you name your kids as the contingent beneficiary and both you and your spouse pass away. So if you have no probate assets, you can avoid probate, obviously. So that means that you leave your bank account uh, on a pay on death, you leave retirement account uh, to a beneficiary that's above the age of 18, you leave life insurance to a beneficiary above the age of 18, any investment accounts also have pay on death beneficiaries. So you will avoid probate if you do those things. And you do not own a house, very, very important. If you do not own a house, um, if you don't own a house jointly with rights of survivorship, period. If you are married and jointly own all your assets, including your house jointly with rights of survivorship, all of your bank accounts jointly, all of your investment accounts jointly, or pay on death, or retirement life insurance policy, and, you're, and you predecease your spouse, and your spouse is still alive, then your spouse will avoid probate. 
but most likely your spouse will not avoid probate for your kids when they pass away or if you pass away together. The third way to avoid probate in the state of Georgia is with estate planning. And when I say estate planning, I do not mean a simple will. So a will, no matter how well written, no matter how complex, typically will not, I mean, not typically ever, never will avoid probate unless, again, there's just no assets to go through probate. It will not avoid probate. Wills are simply legal directives that tell the judge what you want to happen during probate. A living trust is something that goes above and beyond a will, so you would still have a will, but you'd have a living trust, and the living trust is the only mechanism in estate planning that's going to avoid probate in the state of Georgia. Now, a lot of people come to me and they're like, well, my parents got advice that they should just uh, put me on the deed with them and have uh, rights of survivorship. Well, if you plan on living in that house as your primary residence and not selling it, then that may be a good solution. But if you plan on turning around and selling that house as soon as your parents pass away, the capital gains fees are going to be way more expensive than probate is. And that is very, very important. So capital gains fees, 16% fee uh, tax. So anything, so instead of getting that step up in basis where uh, the capital gains tax starts at zero again, it starts on the value of the house after you inherit it, you have to pay capital gains tax on what it was when your parents bought it. In this market, we know that that could be huge. So capital gains taxes, very, very expensive. Um, way more expensive than probate typically is in Georgia. So typically that is not a good idea. So a living trust, you put all your assets in it, you move them so that they're legally retitled into the name of the living trust. And then when you pass away, a successor trustee steps in and can immediately start administering all of the assets from your trust, including your house, without judge intervention, without court, without probate. So those are the three ways in the state of Georgia to avoid probate. Now I've simplified these a little bit for the sake of a short video, so don't get all technical with me. There are, of course, a couple little things here and there, but for the most part, these are the three rules and the three ways that you can avoid probate in the state of Georgia. So cheers, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and a wonderful rest of your week. And five out of 10 for the bullet, bullet tenure. Cheers.